to use this half an hour to um, just have a conversation about the public hearings, what we heard, what we learned, um, and in our paperwork to Teresa, uh, et cetera. And then we do need to be on the floor. The DAA is on the floor today, oh. so let's get down there. We'll, we'll quit at, at 10. So anybody who wants to go first? Oh, good. That way it's done, right? Yeah, yeah. go right. for it. Diane and I uh, were there on behalf of the House. This is at Winooski at VSAC. And uh, Senator Ash was there for Senate Appropriations. We had 56 people um, who were just lovely. Um, we held them to two minutes each. And everybody, it was just wonderful. Um, we. That the topics you want uh, highlighted the major topics. Just okay, top one. gotcha. Yeah. Um, after school programs, um, all care providers of every description that you could uh, to increase the pay, the personal care attendance in various programs, uh, parent child centers. They've got a, uh, a lot of people talking about a three year phased in increase with the master eight uh, grant amount. I've got it all written down, but parent child centers. Um, we learned a lot about high-tech nursing wage, uh, and I think Diane yep. and I are of a mind that we really need to talk about that. A um, lot for my, to restoring the micro-business program and the savings match program for CVOEO in the governor's budget. Both are eliminated. Um, uh, a lot with regard to child care. Um, scholarship support, broadening eligibility requirements. There was a lot for the PEG, the, the public access TV yeah. people, uh, for a, a little bit for a study and then more added to the base requested. Um, many people looking for support for Vermonters feeding Vermonters, at, at, at an initiative of Food Bank. Uh, we heard about the Governor's Institute needing a small amount. Uh, age well. There were several people talking to us about age well, and there's a specific ask there. Uh, farm to school, women's suffrage. Yeah, yeah. 20,000. I, I, I was talking to Kimberly before. Uh, working Lands Enterprise Fund. Um, those are the highlights. And there was not a word, surprisingly, I thought surprising, not one word in any way, shape, or form regarding uh, affordable housing. And there was only one person who spoke in any way, shape, or form, really, with regard to uh, climate-related stuff. Yeah, the public. And that was in terms of uh, the transportation um, component of greenhouse gas. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm just looking through. Is that quickly. good? Yeah, we've got nine pages each on notes yeah. of this. And VSAC. The VSAC folks, they were <coughs> just wonderful. Yeah. And uh, Scott stayed, kept coming in, and that's so that you could listen and hear what was going on. So it's great. All right. Marty. Okay, Chip and I and Jane Kitchell were there. We had 33 people. <coughs> um, <coughs> many of the same topics. Uh, people talking about the Parent Child Center and the CIS bundle debate. Apparently, there has been some change in that regard, and they were concerned about that from two or three people. Uh, there were concerns about the Wellness Ac Access Recovery Plan, the RAP program, that was at our local hospital, but I don't know much about it. I need to find out more about that. We had uh, one person talking about the public access TV, the same thing, $100,000 for a study, $500,000 for more broad information. We had three or four people concerned about the micro-business development program. Um, there were you know, three or four business persons who had benefited from it and promoting uh, that that should be continued. Um, <coughs> budget for the CIS, that was it. Um, community justice centers, restorative justice, um, in, uh, request for an increase needed. Um, uh, we had a homeless person there uh, advocating for more shelters, uh, 
current shelters we have in the area, in our area. They say he's been very helpful, but he needs more support. There needs to be more space. There was another person advocating for more space, more shelters for, more support for shelters, as well as permanent housing. Um, the League of Women Voters was there to advocate for the public access TV. We had three or four people advocating for the Vermont Food Bank Initiative, the Vermonters feeding Vermonters at $500,000. Um, we had, that was probably three or four of those folks. Um, we had one person um, advocating for the Vermont Suffrage Centennial Alliance, wanting some money for their uh, celebration activities. Uh, one of our, the leader of our after school program for our school district was advocating for two and a half million from the state. You've heard that in previous years, but she touted the benefits of that program. Um, long term care is a concern from our northern communities health care um, <clears throat> that there needs to be uh, more support for that uh, and there's not enough nursing homes anyway, so we need to make sure that there's money in Choices for Care to support those folks. Somebody uh, promoting farm to school and Vermont, Vermonters feeding Vermonters. Um, one person uh, advocating for fully funding DHCB at $22.4 million. Uh, one person advocating for more money in uh, SASH programs. Uh, we had some people come all the way from Craftsbury who were concerned that they have a community care center. They were concerned that they were not getting adequate funding um, or even as much funding as nursing homes do. They wanted some more funding for that. It makes it very difficult to operate. Um, oh, we had a faculty member from NVU come and promote the extra $5 million per year for five years for the college system. Uh, we had our regional planner um, support the working lands program. Um, more micro business. We had our local um, women's wellness, well, more than women's uh, group advocating for five hundred thousand dollars for the Vermont Network for Domestic Violence and also the adjustment to the CIS uh, bundled rate. And we had our local mental health folks advocating for workforce development and um, willing, mentioning that they were willing to work with DOC in terms of transitioning uh, folks out of DOC. So that was ours. Any other? No, I, all the ones I thought you might not got, you got them all. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was pretty broad. Yeah. Dave? We had uh, 50 people show up. Wow. It was a great turnout in Morristown. 37 people uh, testified in all three minutes. Ours was filmed, streamed live, apparently. Yep, I was just saying. All of them. All of them. They said they were going to. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, everything that's been said, I believe, um, occurred at ours. Just quickly, community action, uh, the Parent Child Center, Home Health Agency, Lamoille County Mental Health, um, uh, our Craftsbury Community Care Home also appeared. State colleges appeared, several people. Um, fair amount of early childhood, a significant number of different people asking for food bank assistance, the 500,000. The uh, battered women's shelter. Um, I may be omitting some, but they were all, all everything that I've heard. Um, I don't think we had anybody from restorative justice. I think somebody mentioned that so we had multiple people B very uh, impactful and two two points and i'll stop <coughs> one is the um president of the union 150 member union um, spoke up at the mental health and just uh she gave a couple of cases whereby one person with severe and persistent mental illness has had five different case managers in five years and as you might imagine in that world trust is is such in relationships are key as you said they just can't keep people. Their wages are eighty five hundred to eighteen thousand dollars per position, less than what the state of Vermont pays for what they would characterize as comparable positions. They just they're a churning factory and it's just very hard. 
home, home health on Choices for Care, uh, they lost upwards of almost $200,000 on the program. And they're not sure how much longer they, they can do it. So they're, they're paid less than what their, their costs are. And um, uh, um, that coupled with the provider tax is just really raising havoc uh, with, with that. It was very impactful. I'm glad we did it. Yeah. yeah. Who was with you, Richie? And Rich Westman and myself. Uh, Dan Noyce was there, and Alvin Pat showed up also. Linda, uh, we had 26 people, which is good for up in St. Albans. Um, there were three senators there with us, Randy Brock, Corey Parrott, and Bobby Starr. And then I had one, two, three, four members of the legislature along with me, so for the, uh, of the uh, House of Representatives. Um, biggest one was um, um, child care centers. That, that was probably the most. Um, had a couple of people talk about age well, wanting to be funding for age well. Two people spoke for public television. Uh, the Mall Food Bank wanted their $500,000. Um, uh, public television wanted uh, 100000 for the study and 500000 to make up for revenue losses. Um, we heard about domestic violence, um, farm to school funding, which is the food bank, um, a lot of early childhood education, uh, issues. Um, CVOEO's micro business development was getting no funding this year, so they were concerned about that. Um, after school for all, uh, they said that $600,000 was there in 2018. Um, they need 2.5 million annual state investments for that. Um, I had one person talk about funding for the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. They would like $20,000 um, to uh, start memorializing the event. Um, Arm to school, child care, CSI, CIS. But they said for the Children Integrated Services is that um, right now they are getting $502 a month and they want to bring it up to 634, which would be $2.4 million statewide. Um, we had one person talk about substance use prevention, didn't offer any issues, just went on and talked about that. And uh, choices for care, they wanted the, the average continuing funding of $200,000. And uh, I was last night in Barry with Mary, and then three other members were there, Carl Demro, Tommy Walt, and Rob LeClaire. And like the rest of you, we heard a lot from the, par the parent-child centers, uh, Vermont after school, and one person had been to a conference in Iceland and had some interesting input from that. We heard uh, quite a bit from the area agencies on aging, and in particular the meal gap for their home meals on wheels delivery. Uh, from the designated agencies asking for 3% of a Medicaid uh, funding increase, and the fact that in Washington County they have currently 70 plus vacancies, and that's always the struggle like we've already heard in terms of keeping in their, their employees. We heard uh, from the Vermont Workers Center um, about uh, what might be happening with um, the ACO, we heard from a micro business and about the individual development accounts and their importance in the ecosystem of funding that we provide to businesses in our state. Choices for care, we heard from the Vermont Centennial Alliance, which is um, 30 plus groups that are working together to honor <coughs> women's right to vote, coming into its 100th year. We heard about mentoring and about childcare, and as well as about the same farm issues um, in terms of Vermonters feeding Vermonters and how that's perceived as a win-win across the state. Um, and I think one thing that I would add stuck with me, it was the very last speaker who came forth and talked about the idea that we have this social contract, effectively, between the nonprofit sector or others who deliver services and the government. And how are we honoring that? In what direction does it go? How does that change over time? And that, I thought, was a nice 
punctuation to the end of the email. He was basically asking or observing that the system isn't working and we need to revisit, you know, that that whole system and our expectations of them. Yeah. And he was the last one up. We had 34 people. What was it you heard about the ACO? Um, it, yeah, it was uh, people felt that um, that there was money that was going to um, what they stated was as a for-profit entity and that was potentially called having an impact upon Medicaid. Those are, that's my best interpretation of what I heard from them. We had one that echoed that too. Yeah. Don't, don't take our Medicaid dollars was the kind of consistent, there were three or four of them that said that. Bob. How was yours? We were up one. It was very good. 42 spoke. Right. And there's probably 55 or 60 there. I didn't do a head count. <clears throat> um, part, partly because at the very beginning, there's still a few dribbling in. But as they speak, they dribble out. Yeah. So it's hard to get an accurate count anyway. So <laughs> anyhow. Um, yeah, and I had to go on all morning with this because I've heard the same exact issues that have already been <coughs> in pretty much in the same numbers. Mm -hmm. So I, I always thought that, that it, you know, the statewide organization filtered down and sent them out to all these, and you know, that's why you got what you got. So it was very good, very good. Everybody was polite. We had eight um, representatives and senators there. Wow. They just flowed in for whatever reason. Um, and out. But it was good. We were out of there at about 7.30, and oh I'm on my way to Montpelier. Yeah. Yeah. Peter. So I want to start off by saying that we were thanked for having more statewide outreach mm -hmm. than we have here before had. You know, we had, I, I don't know how many spots there were, but I think it was like eight. Um, that is, that's my impression, and certainly we were in Dor uh, Katie and I were in Dorset, um, and it's not the, the quaint village Dorset, it's the Route 7 side Dorset, Dorset extends, and uh, it's called East Dorset, so that's where we were. There was approximately 20 folks there, 14 of whom spoke. We had um, Kathy James and Linda Joy Sullivan were also there with us. Um, Heard much of the same thing, just really briefly. The uh, uh, Parent Child Center, they're looking for the $4 million increase to the master grant, $1.5 million one time. Two folks talked about that. The food bank, $500,000 one time or ongoing. I'm unsure uh, that three folks spoke to that. Uh, early childhood educators just need to continue to work on that piece. One, folk, one person talked about that. Um, level funding for the Council on Aging, one person talked about that. Uh, farm to school, one person talked about that. Um, the House Bill 744, talking about public access television stations, there's $100,000 in there. I haven't looked it up, uh, but I had three, we had three people that asked about that. Um, working lands, we had one person that, that was so grateful. Uh, for the help that she received some years ago from Working Land. She, is, she and her dad are off and flying, and they, their product is actually in Texas. Um, a couple of the uh, professional uh, sports teams, can't remember the, the two, so I won't even try, uh, not the Cowboys. And uh, <laughs> so, so she's, she's off and flying, and you know, but for a small grant there, she might not be. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, someone else spoke to grid optimization and, electric, and the electric vehicle piece that's in the uh, governor's budget. Absolutely concurred with doing that. Um, and then the last person talked about body cameras, supporting body cameras, and uh, doing more um, drug treatment and education. So it was, uh, it was good. We gave everyone three minutes. Um, and uh, it was, uh, like I said, overwhelmingly pleased that we were trying to reach out to more locations around the state. Marty, I didn't write down how many people were here. 33. 33. That spoke? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess yeah. that's yeah. right. There were probably a few more people that didn't speak. I mean, you know, so we had the, maybe 40, the, but 33 spoke. I don't know if you mentioned the, um, the Scots were there, Scott uh, Campbell and uh, Beck. Oh, yes, yes, Scott Campbell and Scott Beck both of Scott. I thought you meant the governor. Yeah. No, he didn't. But no, he had that, been that there during be. the day at the Rotary. <laughs> so. so we were also thanked, and people were really yeah. grateful. And I think it was terrific also that public TV yeah. made yes. a point of being there. They were endorsed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? yeah. Well, that's yeah. something you I went home and watched it. <laughs> So we had, I mean, you know, it must have been, it was well over 200 people. 263. Is that right. where you at? Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty impressive. That I is think very that's, impressive. I think so. That's very impressive. I can't We're think of when we've well. had, you know, when, yeah. when we've had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so. And the people out there are doing their job well. Yeah, yeah. That they all came out yeah. on a to talk. I didn't tour in any. Yeah. I, I, I even connected with one of ours who is a local gelato maker. Who I'm gonna visit. <laughs> 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 I didn't know there was such a person yeah. around yeah. Vermont making yeah. gelato. Oh, yeah. right. That's oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. And we just yeah. eat it, right? So, I don't know how many people here now remember her. Senator Cattell, Jane mm -hmm. Cattell was there. Yeah. Yeah. Her daughter spoke, and so she was there just, she didn't speak. Mm -hmm. She just yeah. watched the proceedings. Yeah. 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 We're even some friendships with Bobby Star and several yeah. of the other guys. Do these want to go to Teresa? Yes, so we should yes. give Teresa your sign up sheets and I think all of your testimony. Boy, Teresa. You don't want our notes. No, you keep all of them going yeah. away. Yeah. There you go, Peter. So, so thank you guys. Good work. How's that for um, time? Yeah, yeah, before, yeah. before we split, for those of you who don't know, we learned at ours with regard to the micro businesses. Uh, switch back the the uh, where that's how it started oh, yeah. Yeah. through a little micro we were in that too yeah, yeah. they what yeah. switch back started through that micro business program yeah. that, that we've been yeah. in many ways asked to restore yeah. to the budget yeah. and the woman who's doing the the florist design now who was almost going to leave Vermont and because of the micro business started a business staying here has now purchased a home increased her business more employees and got, got the award from the Small Business right. the Administration yep. as the best going yeah. Yeah. Any nice other work. concluding thoughts so we are on the floor we should be there for announcements as well as the BAA and then oh, there it looks like caucus. there's kind of, yeah caucus at 12.45, there's voluntary introduction. I think that, mean? that means Kitty would like us to be here, but we're not required yeah, to be here at all. It's kids and from various home yeah. areas. So For what, what is it? Um, it's about, uh, it looks like it's a tobacco control program, and there are kids who wanted to talk with us. So it's not formal testimony, but it's a quarter of one, and then at one, I guess we're going to get trained. So I guess um, the new trainer, uh, Delia, um, mm -hmm. and I want to just check in with everybody on your iPads because we have a path for saving uh, files from the share drive over to your files. That's quicker. And if there, it's not working out, we want to know why and what your settings are so we can fix them. Because I think a lot of people are running into headaches with this and we need to figure it out. It's a group Just adjustment. A group adjustment, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay.